Hey folks, today I'd like to take a casual peek into the Lord of the Rings, the Two Towers AMR action figure. This figure set uh, was part of the second wave of the Two Towers line of uh, basic figures and was originally released in 2002. I bought this figure set at a Target uh, based off of the old uh, Target clearance sticker here. Uh, it was originally sold for $8.99, uh, but I only ended up paying about $4.88. As you can see in the packaging here, uh, the uh, Amber figure here is was part of the original uh, release of the Two Towers line, uh, based off of the uh, Half Moon packaging here. Uh, and it's got the red color scheme, which was common uh, for the Two Towers uh, Merchandise. Uh, I believe the uh, DVD sets were uh, colored red uh, for the two towers on there. And at the top, you can see here uh, Frodo and Sam with Smeagol in silhouette uh, going through the dead marshes. Taking a look at the back of the package here, you can see a description here of Amor on there. And also common to most of the Lord of the Rings figures, the uh, ring inscription here. And uh, some of the action features uh, for Amor here. And also uh, we have other figures from the Two Towers line. We have Amor, King Theoden, Grimma, Wormtongue, and a Rohirrim soldier on there. Let's go ahead and uh, open this guy up, and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back, and we have Aemer out of the package. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the accessories that come with this figure. There are two accessories. First accessory here is the uh, sword here, and it's in the scabbard uh, right now. Just pull that out. And it's a nice detailed uh, sword here. I really like it especially at the hilt area here uh, instead of having symmetrical uh, horse uh, figures on either side of the hilt it's only on one side and it's kinda neat and it makes it uh, a lot more unique uh, than your typical uh, symmetrical hilted sword and on the other side it's the same way and you can see the horse head barely see the horse head detail on there it's kind of neat and also you have these uh, ridges here on the sword handle and then you have uh, some a little bit of detail on the pommel there it's very nice a little short though uh, I thought it would have been a longer sword and it's made of a uh, flexible plastic on there but this is the sword and next thing we'll take a look at here is the helmet which is the second accessory that comes with this figure uh, I'm not quite a fan of it, of the helmet, uh, when it's uh, on Amor's head here. It just looks a little too wide, uh, too round, uh, compared to what I remember seeing in the movie. And it also, you lose a lot of the detail of Amor's face on here. And it doesn't quite look like Amor with this, uh, or I should say the actor that betrayed Amor uh, with this helmet on. Uh, it, just doesn't quite look uh, quite like, uh, I believe his name was Carl Urban that betrayed Amor on there. And uh, there's some neat things about the helmet though, uh, once you remove it uh, from the figure's head. And I'll go ahead and do that now. And you can see uh, the details of the helmet, it's actually quite nice on there. And uh, one thing you, you don't really notice uh, with when this helmet is on the figure's head is this strap here, the chin strap. And it's dangling loose here and you can see the other end of the chin strap here with the buckle. It's kind of neat how it just hangs off to the side, how Aimer doesn't actually uh, put the chin strap on. But uh, with the helmet on the figure's head, it kind of gets lost in his hair, so you really don't notice it. But I think that's a nice little touch that they have that hanging loose there. And uh, it's very detailed on the helmet. You can see the horse head right here, uh, riding down from the top down to the nose, acts as a nose guard 
on there. It's very neat. And you can see all the weathered look on here on the metal. You can see some design. It's not too clear on the design, but still kind of neat that how they added the design. And you can see some of the chain mail over here on the back of the helmet. And then you have this I think this is a horse tassel, a horse hair probably. Uh, his tassel here. It would have been nicer if it was flowing out like he was riding, but uh, they have it uh, just flat down and uh, riding down to the down the length of the his uh, back here. So still kind of neat to have that tassel on there, and it's very bright white and no shading uh, whatsoever. Just painted bright white on there. But still, it's a very nice uh, helmet. I uh, love the detail on the helmet on there. Now on to Aimer. And as you can see right here, um, with the helmet off, it looks a little closer to Carl Urban. Not quite uh, the likeness, but you can see uh, um, uh, some touches here and there of the actor on there. Right? This is one of the figures where they don't quite get the likeness uh, down on there. And uh, I'm not too much of a fan of figures with the open mouth. Um, it just it, because it, it provides limited uh, ways of displaying your figure, uh, but this one actually is not too bad on here. Um, on here, you look like he's doing a battle cry on here. Uh, on, if if he was on his horse. Uh, oh, and that's one thing I want to uh, note is that uh, uh, throughout the line, uh, they had horse and rider sets. Uh, with the basic figure sets and uh, you would think that Aimer would have come with a horse and rider set uh, but he never did and uh, so it would have been a natural for this uh, figure uh, even the way the legs are um, we'll talk about the legs later on the articulation but uh, just n this seems natural for uh, this figure to have a horse for him to ride on uh, but he never came with a horse and rider set so which is unfortunate. Uh, but continue on the detail. So a very nice uh, hair uh, design here. It's nice and soft uh, at the tips. A little harder as it uh, goes up uh, toward the skull here. And I love the detail on the armor. It's just nice and detailed. You can see all the uh, detail on the chest plate. Even on the shoulder uh, armor here. And you can see uh, the chain link on the on the arms, and then you have arm guards here. It's very detailed on there. Very very nice. You can see the chain underneath this chest armor here, running down. It looks like he even has scale mail underneath the chain mail. So <laughs> that's kind of neat. Very very nice. Love the detail work on this figure. Very very cool. And then he's got the it looks like a leather leggings here, and then he has some shin armor, which is nice and detailed as well. Very very well done. He even has the straps on the back going over the boot. Very cool. Very nice on here. Uh, go, uh, no, you have the detail on the scabbard as well. That's very nice as well. Go, going over the uh, articulation of this figure, the head does uh, actually go all the way around, but uh, with the hair getting caught in the parts of the armor, uh, you really have to work uh, to get this head all the way around if you wanted to, but it does go all the way around, even with the long hair here. Uh, the head uh, barely goes up and down at all, so... The arms uh, do go all the way around. They do go out, but just a little bit and in. No, no bicep articulation. Uh, bends at the elbow, doesn't rotate at the elbow, unfortunately. And the hands uh, rotate all the way around. The uh, torso is uh, kind of fixed because of the action gimmick, gimmick uh, of this figure. Uh, the... Uh, torso does not rotate to his right, uh, but it does uh, 
rotate to his left, but it, it springs back, and that's the action feature. If you put the sword in his hand here, basically you just uh, pull uh, the figure back to the left, and you'll swing his sword. That's the action gimmick. So you're limited on the articulation at the torso, or waist, I should say, uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, the legs are on a... Um, hinge joint, uh, hinge swivel joint, so it does go up, down, to the back, and also goes out to the side uh, a bit, uh, but he has, he can't really get his legs um, straight up and down, he's got that bow-legged uh, legs here, which is, I guess, natural for a horse rider. And you would think uh, this would naturally fit on one of the horses uh, from the horse and rider set. So, um, why he never uh, came with horses, um, I just beyond me, I don't know why he never released it. So, uh, he does not have any thigh articulation. Uh, he does bend a single joint at the knee, uh, up and down, and his feet uh, point uh, up and down as well. Uh, but does not rotate. And um, overall, I really like this figure. Uh, it's just that I wish he came with a horse uh, because I think it's just like I said, it would have been natural to have this guy with a horse. Uh, but this is my casual peek into the uh, Lord of the Rings Two Towers Aemir action figure. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.